From NFL to NIL, it's a buzzword in college football. It's something that gets the people paying attention and watching your YouTube videos, but it's been such a complicated thing at Baylor specifically. It's been a roller coaster of two years of NIL for a lot of schools, but the way we perceive it at Baylor, is, it seems to be changing every day. At the beginning, I thought Baylor is never going to be competitive in NIL. Just never. Okay? Because, you know, small school, small alumni base, the, these big state schools are going to be what just takes over. And that's obviously most of the college football landscape anyway. But then again, I just thought you weren't going to get these plucky Baylor teams every couple of years, these plucky TCU teams, uh, even someone like a Washington state who is, you know, a state school, but, but not all that big. So all that to say, I, I thought they were going to fail pretty bad at it, but then I see schools that are similar to Baylor. Um, and similar in size that are doing pretty well at it. And then we start to hear throughout this year from Mac Rhodes and Javon Overshone um, from the Baylor football department, athletic department, I should say, that NIL is actually going pretty well. And from the sources I've heard inside those buildings is that is right. Baylor's not doing too poorly. Uh, their players are, everyone's getting compensated. And then I hear a week ago, a week and a half ago too, he said it twice, from Dave Aranda that he doesn't know how to handle NIL and he doesn't want to handle NIL. I mean, he literally said that in his press conference last Monday was, I don't like the transactional portion of it. It makes me uncomfortable. I don't want one guy making more than another guy. Welcome to the U S of a buddy, <laughs> but specifically welcome to college football. College football has never been socialist <laughs> in any way. The NFL is in a good way. But college football is survival of the fittest, man. You you gotta you gotta learn this thing. I mean, you you gotta adapt or die here. This is social Darwinism at its finest with the transfer portal and NIL, neither of which Dave Aranda has handled well, and he's admitted as much. And then so he says that last Monday, and then after the game on Saturday, this heartbreaking loss, no one knows in that room whether he's going to be the head coach at this point in the week anyway. And Matt Mosley asks if he has a plan. And he says, you know, yes, I do. And the first thing he mentions is being hyper-aggressive in NIL. So now I'm like, okay, Mac and, and Javon Overshone say this is, this is doing pretty well. And the people I hear from, to be fair, are also saying it's going pretty well. And then I have the head coach saying it's not going well. And that he doesn't know how to make it go well, essentially. He's going to try. So I'm like, who am I supposed to believe here? We heard earlier in the season, Mac Rhodes did an interview saying that their NIL giving was the second most of anyone in the Big 12. Okay. And he's saying you might not see it on the field here in 2023, but you're going to see it in the future. You're going to see it uh, on the campus as well with the facilities. And that's, that's fantastic. I'm willing to be patient for that. It doesn't mean that Baylor's not falling behind, but I'm willing to be patient for that and hear that out. And then I hear the head coach saying, it's not good. And potentially is a reason why they're losing. So who am I supposed to believe here? And then to add on to that cake, in in his state of the union, state of the program address this week, Mac Rhodes talks about NIL again. And he says, Dave's analytical mind is very beneficial to us in terms of NIL. That's that's one of the reasons why we're keeping him around. So again, the coach says he's not good at it. That he doesn't even like it. And then I'm hearing that one of the reasons you're keeping him around after his third losing season in four years is because you like his potential with NIL. Which is it? Which is it? Do we suck at it or do we not? Are we playing poor or are we not? And so the best part about this is yesterday we stumbled across the NIL website, and this is something that's been um, out on Twitter, that Baylor puts out. It's on the Baylor website, Baylor and NIL. They say that the university is number one in total NIL compensation in the Big 12. Number one. Whoa, whoa, that jumps out. And then you go look at the numbers, which they publish as well. 
total annual NIL compensation year to date. This is actually NIL from July 2021 to the end of June 2023. 3.3 million. Okay. That's solid. That's great. That's the first thing I think of when I read that. And then I think, wait a minute. You know, I don't know too much about NIL, but 3.3 probably isn't the most in the conference. That's because it's not. It's not. And this is a tweet from Jackson Posey. That's at by Jackson Posey. Um, like a byline, not that kind. Um, at by Jackson Posey on Twitter. And so he tweets that out. And then three pictures of of what some of the other schools in the Big 12 are reporting, okay? The University of Texas reports they have made $15.7 million in NIL since the NIL era began in July of 2021. Last I checked, 15.7 is considerably higher than 3.3. Almost five times the amount. And see, that's what that that's one of the first things that kind of bugs me about this. Baylor shouldn't be comparing itself to Texas when it comes to NIL. No, no one will tell you that. We can't play poor, and we can't say we can't compete with anybody in the conference. But no, money wise, we're never going to compete with them. But when you're putting out your number one in the conference, you're saying we're not only competing with them, we're better than them, and you're not. Okay, let's do another school in the Big Twelve, Oklahoma, Crimson and Cream NIL Fund. Since it started, they raised $1.6 million in 30 days, by the way, which is half of Baylor's total earnings, and $5 million in, just in fan donations since NIL began. $5 million, if you're keeping track at home, is also more than $3.3 million. This ain't golf. It's not the lowest score wins. It's not high school cross country. Okay? So the higher score wins. And so, okay. Maybe, maybe they're saying of the teams in the new Big 12, Baylor is number one. Okay, it didn't say that in the graphic, but maybe that's what they're thinking. So let's look a little bit deeper at another school who is currently in the Big 12 and will be in the Big 12 next year, Texas Tech. In-state school, public, sure. A little bit bigger than Baylor. Not that much bigger than Baylor. A little bit bigger than Baylor. and is not as good a overall program as Baylor. Not as attractive a job as Baylor, okay? So Texas Tech, they report earnings of $7.9 million. 15.7, 5, and 7.7, 7.9, excuse me. I am no math whiz, but all of those numbers are bigger than 3.3. So again, I ask when it comes to NIL, who do I believe? Is it the coach saying it's a problem and that he stinks at it? Is it the athletic department who is saying, not only are we good, but we're the best of the best in this conference when it comes to NIL? Who should I believe? And maybe they hinted at that, Baylor Athletics did, because this afternoon, after that that screenshot started revolving around Twitter, all of a sudden this afternoon, those stats were no longer up there. It was pulled down from the Baylor Athletics website. So again, who, who am I supposed to believe? Now the, the webpage has 54% of student-athletes receiving one or more NIL deals. 13th nationally in total NIL compensation among open doors partners. I don't know what that means, but again, I'm finding it hard to believe with all the other numbers that we're seeing. Um, 3,900, just a hair over under 4,000 is the average transaction value across all sports and total NIL compensation still at that same number, 3.278 million. But what, what am I believing? Is, is Baylor poor or not? I don't get it. And, I feel like the less open you are with the fan base, the worse this gets because the fans and the alumni are the ones that are paying for this. They are the ones funding it. And there are Baylor people out there that want to help, that want to make this better. 
We've had to suffer through these last two football seasons. We want to make it better. I don't have the money for that, but other people want to make it better. And when they're not being up front or they're just giving you what seems to be a falsehood that would actually deter you from giving money, I, I just, I need more transparency here. I know they don't have to do it, but I need more transparency if I'm going to be getting these conflicting reports. Either you're good at it or you're not. And I'm leaning towards the fact that they are good at it, just from what I've heard and people inside those buildings from some players. But then again, I don't know who to believe. I just don't. And I want to believe. I'm like the X-Files. I want to believe. How do you think Baylor's NIL situation is going? What can be done to stop it or fix it? I should say, not stop it. Keep going. What could be done to fix it? And who should I be believing here? Am I missing something? Am I misconstruing something in this NIL world? Please, please let me know down in the comments.